Hello friends, today I will be talking about retrosynthesis of anti-obesity drug. Yes, you heard me right, I'm talking about anti-obesity drug. There's a drug which you can use and you can easily lose your weight. I don't know, you will lose your weight or not. But I'm just telling you there's a drug which can be prepared in an organic laboratory synthesis and you can use it as an anti-obesity. So what if you are given a question in the paper that if you have to make this big molecule a drug that is anti-obesity drug and you have to start from this 1,4-diphenyl one, one compound. The very, very interesting or cheaply available organic compound. If you have to start synthesis of this big molecule from this one, how will you transform this? You need a method now that cuts through it and divides this compound into logical fragments which you can join them apart to make a big molecule afterwards. And that strategy is called retrosynthesis. Now you need to think backward that how you can synthesize these sort of joints or these sort of functional groups. Let's start. This is the compound, this one. And if you look closely into this compound, there are several functional groups such as ether, alcohol, amine, aromatic amine, amide, amide. So if you further look into it, uh, you can disconnect it from such a position where you will get a logical synthone or synthetic equivalent. So first step in our retrosynthesis is to recognize functional groups and recognize their relationship. So the relationship between alcohol, this one and this amine is one, two. If you count one and two, there are two carbons which are separating this OH group and NH group. So you disconnect it from C and bond and the left hand side will give you an epoxide, this one, and the right hand side will give you a NH2 group, right? Again, I'm repeating, there's a one, two, Di-functional group relationship between NH and alcohol, one to dix, so one to disconnection, or one to disconnection. You write it or dix dix disconnection, short form, and you will get epoxide on one side and NH2 on the other side. Now let's have a look further how you can disconnect this compound. You can disconnect it from here, as you can see. This is a ether linkage. So CO ether, so it's an ether bond which you can disconnect it and make one side phenol or phenolic OH and the other side a uh, alkyl halide which they will react OH will attack on this carbon and this chlorine will leave and you will make a joint or you will make a bond between this oxygen and this carbon. Now if you cut this from here you will get one part this one left hand side and right hand side. Now, if we have to do retrosense of this compound again further, now recognize functional group, there's an amide functional group present. The easy way to disconnect this is from CN position, amide. One side will become acid chloride, which is this one, and the other side will become primary amine, which is this one. And if you look into this compound, if you disconnect it from here, uh, that is uh, CN bond disconnection. So you will get a C a bromide or alkyl halide on one side and NH2 on the other side. So we have to protect it. We have to use protecting chemistry. And if you look at, again, this is ether. You can disconnect it, the CO bond. One side will become alkyl halide, in this case, dihalides. And this is the starting material. That was a question. So if you have to start it from this compound, how will you synthesize this? So this is how we uh, did retrosynthetic analysis and we have got to a point where we can start synthesis from this compound. Now let's have a look this, at the synthesis. I have taken synthesis from the Claydon book as such.